Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Oh, what is up, it's Mark Amano, and I and the Sibling and Reviews here. To mark the return of the review set of the channel, I review Capcom's latest class-based Dino Shitter. Can Hayden survive the war game, or is he going to be Raptor Chat before this review even starts? Without further ado, let's find out. First off, big shout out to Hayden Krieger Stevens for the request to do Exoprimal in the first place. Now, back to the review. Dinosaur shooters have been a thing since the late 90s. Notable entries of the subgenre are the Dino Crisis and Turok series. Earlier on this year, Dino Crisis developers Capcom decided to give the subgenre a whole new lease of life with this title. The game is set in the year 2043. The entire world is in the grip of a massive dinosaur outbreak. You and a crack team of exo fighters have crash landed on Bikatoa Island, led by an AI called Leviathan. Leviathan has the ability to predict the location of future dinosaur outbreaks. It is up to you to participate in dinosaur combat tests to test the effectiveness of exosuits in order to develop the perfect model. The accessibility scores are as follows. To kick things off, this ability is scored a sky high 11. There are numerous colorblind filters which can be enabled and disabled via the game's options menu. This allows a player with a visual impairment to choose whichever color filter is more suitable for their impairment. As this is a filter, every element on the screen will be affected while enabled, so a player with a visual impairment will be able to play this game with no issues whatsoever. Audibility was also a sky high 11. This game had subtitle support which can be enabled and disabled via the sound section of the options menu. These subtitles are present during cutscenes, menus and then game chatter. Better still, there are font size options which allows the user to customize whatever size of the text you want the subtitles to be in. This does not put the player off any risk of getting any eye strain as the subtitles can be read very easily. So again, Capcom fails to disappoint when taking this category into account. Next up, Mobility has got an average 8. This is the, where the shortfalls of the game lie. The PC version which we used to test it, the keyboard and mouse controls can be fully customized to suit their impairments. There are full controller support available right out of the box. When using a controller, the bottom layers can be fully customized. However, there are no legacy stick layouts available. For a pair with a mobility impairment, a legacy stick layout is a must have when playing video games in general, especially console versions. This can make the console version unplayable, but a step in the right direction, but a swing and a miss. So a player with a mobility impairment might want to play the PC version, providing your hardware is powerful enough to run this. And last by certainly by no means least, gameplay give it 10. On the surface, this game looks like Capcom's attempt to the cash into the highly popular Lizard Entertainment game Overwatch. Each and every exosuit has divided into three distinct roles, Tank, Assault and Support. For example, Skywave is an excellent support class, as she can heal teammates while damaging dinosaurs and enemy exofighters. But the game's mix of PvE and PvP make this game truly unique. For most of the match, you are racing against the enemy team to complete certain objectives. For example, clearing an area of all dinosaurs and defending an area against dinosaur attacks. When a team enters the final mission of a match, they might need to take on the enemy team in combat and a variety of scenarios, like data key security, which is basically payload escort from Overwatch, but both teams have their own data key to escort. These final missions are randomized, so you can never tell which final mission you're going to be in. While you are grinding through the game, you uncover the game's story piece by piece. However, there is no single player mode available for the game. Sadly, single player only experiences are few and far between these days. Do you think the single player game should be showing a bit more love these days? Let me know down in the comments. 
So in summary, Axel Primal is an excellent soft reboot of the Dino Crisis series. The game does feel repetitive as you play in the exact match over and over again, and the single player content is non-existent. However, the excellent mix of PvE and PvP makes up for the shortfalls. So if you're looking for a class-based hero shifter to play over the Christmas period, but you are sick and tired of Overwatch, this game is an excellent choice. And the overall score is a perfect 100%. This is Spartan Commander 1918, Chief Editor of Disabled Gamer Review, signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.